Okay, so next speaker of the and the last speaker of the morning session is Dr. Taras Turiv, the former scientist from the Institute of Physics of Ukraine, and now uh, Dr. Taras Turiv is uh, from Kent State University from USA. Uh, Talk with talk active matter controlled by nanopatternage pneumatic liquid crystal. Please. Thank you, Professor Yatsenko. Can you hear me well? Can you see my slides? Uh, uh, yes, thank you. We, we can hear you, you clearly and coherently. Like, uh, we can see, and we can uh, see your slide. Thank you. Great. Great. So uh, good afternoon to everyone on the conference site and the Eastern Hemisphere. And good morning to those who are connecting from Western. I'm not sure if there is anyone, uh, but uh, at least in here, it's really early morning. And uh, yeah, I've been waiting uh, forward and uh, looking forward to, to give the presentation uh, very soon. So. But I thank the organizers for the nice opportunity to um, uh, to be at least virtually connected to to my homeland and share uh, our research. Um, and uh, I'll talk about experiments on uh, pneumatic liquid crystal with uh, nano pattern structure of average molecular orientation, and we'll show how the system can be used to control uh, active matter, and in particular. Um, it, its drastic impact on the collective behavior of swimming bacteria. But uh, yeah, first, uh, I would like to acknowledge people without whom this work would be impossible to accomplish. Uh, it's my PhD advisor, Oleg, uh, Professor Oleg Lavrentovich, uh, together with group members, Dr. Sergei Shayanovsky, uh, current and former graduate students. Um, Chen Hui, uh, Runa, Mushtaba, and Hand. Especially, uh, I'd like to acknowledge our collaborator, Dr. Chihu Wei, uh, who invented and provided us with the nano pattern plasmonic photo mask for the experiments. Uh, of course, not to forget funding support from NSF and DOE grants and the University Fellowship Award from KSU. So, what is active matter? Um, in general, it's a collection of live or inanimate units that convert internal uh, metabolic energy or external energy in order to move or exert uh, mechanical forces. Um, and these, and these uh, systems are inherently out of equilibrium. And there are many examples of those uh, in the nature from animal motion in microscopic world to swimming bacteria or cells uh, that we are all made of. Um, microscopic example of Bacillus subtilis, uh, the bottom left uh, video, uh, those that are swimming in water and human dermal fibroblasts proliferating on a plastic uh, surface clearly show that uh, their motion is generally chaotic uh, due to the isotropic properties of the environment. And uh, indeed, uh, the lack of orientational ordering in the dispersing medium can result in the motion of swimming bacteria, for example, uh, to be chaotic. And in fact, bacteria are the most populated living species on our planet. And some estimates give the number of bacteria cells on Earth to be far greater than the number of stars in the visible universe. Um, so why waste such enormous potential and instead harness and uh, uh, control their dynamics in order to extract useful energy or to build micro machines of the future. Uh, so we intend to produce uh, direction to introduce uh, directionality uh, and control in the collection of bacterial swimmers by replacing isotropic medium such as water with an isotropic and orientationally ordered pneumatic liquid crystal environment. Uh, for, for the experiments, we 
employed previously introduced uh, system, bacterial microswimmers dispersed in uh, a pneumatic chromonic liquid crystal. Uh, we use Bacillus subtilis, which have elongated bodies with long multiple flagella. The bacterium pushes forward with pro uh, propulsion force and experiences uh, hydrodynamic drag, thus creating a primary force dipole uh, that points along the body of the bacterium and drives the pusher-like flows. Um, as a pneumatic medium, we use water-based chromonic disodium chromoglycate, uh, whose uh, plate-like molecules uh, with uh, peripheral ionic groups stacked together, forming elongated aggregates at room temperature. Um, the hydrophobic polyaromatic core is trying to stay away from water molecules, whereas uh, hydrophilic ionic groups like to be exposed to aqueous environment. Um, and um, at certain concentrations and temperature, the aggregates tend to uh, align with each other along average molecular orientation, orientation which is called uh, the director. Uh, DSCG is non-toxic to our bacteria. Um, and uh, while bacteria swimming in chromonic pneumatic, uh, they typically align uh, their body, bodies, uh, body axis with the local director. And due to the pneumatic symmetry, uh, you know, they can move along both positive and negative director orientation um, and with no particular placement in the perpendicular direction. So they could be randomly distributed along the perpendicular um, axis. Uh, the director of chromonic pneumatic can be pre-patterned uh, and pre-designed in um, arbitrary spatially varying um, patterns using photo alignment technique. It's well known for, for a liquid crystal, um, liquid, liquid crystal technology. Uh, well, briefly, we eliminate the photo alignment agent layer or azodi um, or spin coated azodi film uh, through the perforated nano slits uh, in the aluminum film. So the light passing through the nano slits be, uh, becomes linearly polarized and creates easy access of alignment for the pneumatic liquid crystal director. Um, next, we assemble two substrates with identical patterns into a rectangular cell with a thickness of up to 20 microns and inject the chromonic liquid crystal with bacteria uh, dispersed in it. And uh, the alignment from the substrate translates into the bulk of the liquid crystal. Um, using the photo, uh, photo alignment technique, uh, we pre-designed the director field of chromonic pneumatic in the topological defect uh, configurations. And uh, the topological defects in pneumatic are characterized by the uh, director around the defect core um, with topological charge M and initial phase phi naught. And defect charge tells the sense of rotation and the winding number of the uh, director as one circumnavigates around this core of the defect. And the uh, initial phase angle um, essentially determines the type of deformation. So we disperse bacteria in pneumatic with defects of plus one uh, radial or pure splay and plus one uh, circular or pure band uh, type of the deformation or the director distortion. And uh, as you can see, bacteria follow um, the director in either radial or circular bipolar fashion. So equal number of them are moving in and out uh, or uh, counter and clock, uh, clockwise directions when the concentration of bacteria is low. So there is no net flows created in, in, in these configurations at least. Um, only when the concentration of bacteria initially is large, they tend to accumulate inside the core of plus one uh, sp uh, splay or radial defect. Uh, but uh, in spiral plus one defect with uh, a mixed splay band uh, deformations, deformation, something unusual happens. Uh, bacteria perform unipolar circular motion um, around such plus one uh, spiral defect um, with the local concentration and velocity uh, being maximum at some distance from the core. Uh, just to qualitatively understand this phenomenon, one can think of bacteria initially oriented um, along with, with the local director, uh, but once the concentration increases, 
they start to interact hydrodynamically with uh, uh, their force dipoles. And then the vector of some of those forces, uh, the red arrow on the left uh, top picture, um, results in the circular net force. And the direct of distortion attracts the bacteria and with elevated concentrations um, near the defect core, the unipolar circular net flow of bacteria is actually generated in this configuration. Uh, this uh, kind of reminds me uh, a little bit uh, a different kind of active matter like one on this video. It's probably lagging a little bit, but uh, I hope you get the point. So um, now back to the board. Uh, now to apply more exact approach, uh, we use active stress uh, written in this invariant form. Um, and uh, this is the force density, the active force density uh, in this case is equal to uh, the product of activity onto the vector field that represents the linear combination of splay um, and the band um, director distortions. Uh, activity is proportional to the concentration of active units um, and the force dipole. Uh, but for simplicity, we consider it to be constant in our system. Um, the sign of activity depends on the type of active unit and uh, for pusher type is negative. Um, and since we, we know explicitly the director field, we can plot the force vector field uh, and you can probably see the uh, similarities with the qualitative picture. Now by balancing active force and viscous uh, drag force, we can calculate the velocity field, uh, which again turns out to be very similar to experimental uh, velocity profile. Uh, the polar components of the bacteria velocity uh, coincide with the theoretical description as shown by Fitty. Um, by varying the phase angle phi naught, uh, bacteria swirls of different radius can be observed. Um, you can see the peak of radial bacterial number distribution um, shifts away from the defect core with the increase of the phase angle. Uh, so qualitatively, um, this can be understood as uh, the, we have the radial component of the active force um, in here, um, which is essentially zero at 45 degrees. And here is the distribution in green, kind of behind all the other uh, lines. Uh, but it's it's narrow, and the bacteria are kind of confined uh, in a 45 degree swirl, as we seen before. Uh, the radial component is negative for five, not uh, less than 45 degrees. So that's why the swirl kind of shrinks um, with low phase uh, initial phase phi naught. And for phi not larger than 45 degrees, uh, the, this results in the expansion of bacterial distribution. And this is essentially what you can see from the, uh, from the um, traces of the bacteria for different phase angles. Uh, we, we, also into, we also try to examine how bacteria interact with defects of different sign of topological charge. So we create patterns with periodic square lattice of plus one uh, and minus one spiral defects. Um, bacteria split into subcolonies that swarm around each spiral uh, defect of the positive charge and avoid negative one as, as shown by strongly modulated concentration. Uh, active force near minus one defect suggest that they indeed should uh, deflect. Uh, the pair of plus and minus one half defects can effectively pump the bacteria uh, unidirectionally from negative to positive charge defect. Um, distribution of velocity components show clearly net flows uh, along the horizontal axis. And um, active force calculated from, um, for the design director field predicts actually this behavior. And similar to integer charge defects, bacteria are attracted to positive defects and repelled from negative ones. Um, in the pneumatic with pre-designed director in the form of a, a C-stripe pattern or splay and bend deformation separated in space, 
uh, bacteria do follow the director, but highly concentrate into narrow bands inside the splay deformation of the director and avoid band regions. Uh, moreover, the average velocity of the bacteria is, the blue curve here is, is actually rectified towards the specific direction, which is set by the orientation of C-stripe. Uh, this, allow, this allows bacteria to effectively transport heavy glass microbeads, for example. Qualitatively, uh, the behavior in defect-free defect C-stripe patterns uh, can be understood by considering vectorial superposition of two uh, nearby forces, nearby force dipoles of bacteria in splay region. Uh, band regions do not introduce net flows due to the lack of activity in there. Um, if the concentration of bacteria in the jet inside the splay region increases further, uh, the so-called bending instability appears and the jet starts to uh, undulate uh, within the splay region. And the, this can be understood as the, uh, as the hydrodynamic interaction of nearby bacteria force dipoles produces, uh, that produces net active force that tends to realign the jet. Uh, once the concentration is high, is high enough, the small fluctuating banding starts to develop into fully undulating uh, sign-like structure with the defined wavelength and amplitude um, that persist even at the concentration at which the topological turbulence is observed. Well, in, in collaboration with Professor Julia Yeomans and Igor Aronson, uh, using numerical simulations based on two-phase and advection diffusion models, uh, we confirm that the undulation is, sta is stabilized uh, even at high activity levels, as you can see at, uh, at minus five and minus, and minus four. And, and uh, it can actually be used again to, uh, to transport microcargo since bacteria, even in the undulated jets, uh, um, perform the rectified, uh, rectified motion. So in conclusion, uh, to this part, uh, an isotropic medium such as pneumatic with pre-designed nanopattern director can be used to control spatial distribution of bacteria, uh, geometry, and polarity of their collective motion. Uh, bacteria recognize topological defects of different charge and engage in persistent unidirectional motion in mixed and uh, spatially separated splay band uh, patterns. Um, and now let me quickly uh, switch to a slightly different but, uh, uh, but uh, related story involving spherical droplets immersed in, into the single, mole the single molecule calamitic pneumatic liquid crystal, such as uh, 5CB. It's uh, well known for its use as a component in liquid crystal display matrix. Um, so if the prefer alignment of the director on the surface of the droplet is perpendicular to the interface. Um, once uh, the droplet is immersed into the uniform pneumatic, the droplet acquires a bulk topological defect um, in order to match the overall uniform alignment set by the bounding plates. And typically droplets of the diameter comparable to the cell thickness are accompanied with uh, equatorial uh, disclination, disclination line or Saturn ring, so-called. Um, and somewhat smaller and with stronger surface anchoring on the interface, uh, droplets develop a dipolar structure uh, with a minus one hyperbolic Hatchhoff's uh, defect next to the droplet, which is effectively a plus one radial uh, bulk topological, uh, topological defect. Um, so, this topic is, is actually uh, quite known in the field of liquid crystals um, and in equilibrium, both asymmetric dipolar and symmetric Saturn ring um, droplets uh, show no net displacement. But uh, we ask ourselves uh, what would happen if the active bacteria are placed inside the droplet. And uh, in the dipolar case, uh, the swimming bacteria momentum um, from the inside is translated into the persistent flow around the dipolar droplet that drives it, uh, the droplet itself toward the hedgehog defect. Um, and 
again, the, yeah, there is no translation in the perpendicular direction. You can see the green line there. Um, the dipolar droplet self-produced self uh, locomotion is uh, uh, not strictly unidirectional. Uh, when observed within short time intervals, such as uh, uh, 50 milliseconds, um, the droplet makes steps forward and backward along the horizontal axis, uh, but the motion overall um, uh, is persistent towards the hedgehog and it prevails. Um, Saturn ring configuration around active droplets um, is of quadrupolar symmetry and yields no rectified propulsion until um, should be happening. Yeah, it should be happening now. Uh, it it actually could be transformed. So in this case, it's just uh, by chance, but in, it could be done in controlled manner into dipolar structure uh, with the uh, broken four aft symmetry as in the previous uh, slide. Um, and th this would result into the, uh, with, in the, into the persistent uh, droplet motion. So we used fluorescently labeled nanopartic nanoparticles um, to capture flows um, induced by the bacteria inside and outside of the droplet, uh, while uh, no correlation in the internal flows of the bacterial is of, of the bacteria is observed. Uh, the broken symmetry of the dipolar director structure leads to external flows that drive the droplet. So here are the, the, the velocity map, which is actually plotted with respect to the, to the moving droplet. Um, and as you can see in the, in the laboratory frame, the droplet should move to the right, the opposite direction uh, of the arrows in the, in the map. Uh, again, in the case of freely swimming, like similarly, like is in the case of this freely swimming bacteria uh, in the bulk, uh, the trajectory of active droplets uh, with bacteria confined within them can be pre-designed by patterning the molecular orientation of the nematic. And here we produce circular trajectories for droplets of a different size. Um, and uh, just the simple picture behind the mechanism for Self-propulsion is just simply rooted in the ability of polar director field uh, surrounding the droplet to rectify the random flows of the bacteria, uh, bacterial swimmers inside the droplet and um, give rise to the directional flow outside of the droplet. And one can imagine uh, the viscosity of the medium on the right from the droplet um, and on the left to be different due to the simply local director distortion. Uh, the director is mostly uh, vertical on the right side, which uh, hence, you know, um, leads to higher viscosity in that direction. Uh, just to summarize this part, the anisotropic environment uh, offers um, um, offers um, a basically uh, the possibility of microscale propulsion. Uh, for the immersed droplets, microscopic droplets, uh, based on the broken symmetry orientation of orientational ordering around the droplet. And uh, just to recap my story, um, we, we have shown that replacing the isotropic medium with an isotropic pneumatic environment dramatically changes the dynamics of uh, microparticles, uh, in particular uh, swimming bacteria. Uh, now we should be able to predict and control the dynamics of active matter, such as bacteria. Um, and uh, we hope that this opens the, the opportunities to design out of equilibrium spatial temporal behavior uh, with the goal to developing uh, new dynamic materials and systems. And uh, with this, I look forward to continue the discussion now during the conference and beyond the setting of this conference. And um, that's all from me. Thank you for the amazing uh, presentation, amazing results. Uh, we have uh, questions from uh, uh, Leonid uh, Dalkov. The first question is, uh, 
Taras, beautiful presentation and quite interesting topic. Is there any idea to force those bacteria to make some useful action, curing or some of some diseases, a transport of drugs, some medical uh, diagnostic? And I would add, uh, how can you do this? Uh, uh, how can you change uh, special this uh, behavior of liquid crystal, maybe with laser? Yeah, yeah, Leonid, those are really good points. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we think that uh, there is an enormous potential for uh, liquid crystal medium, you know, pneumatic liquid crystal medium to be actually used not only in the liquid, in the displays, but there is a huge potential for biomedical applications. And you, you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the, the drug delivery and the diagnostics, um, the uh, bacterial contamination um, recognition and some other applications. And those are really good points uh, uh, to explore. Um, and uh, um, yeah, yeah, we hope that this, this can take take off and, and be used for whatever, uh, whatever technology, uh, you know, there is. Um, another, yeah, good point. Uh, at, at this moment, the um, photo patterns are static and just prescribed on the surface of the, of the slides. And at the moment, we are not able to, to change them in time. So that's why I say it's just just the modulation of the director field in space. It, and it's, it would be great if we can uh, actually, uh, we would be able to control this in time as well. And this is yeah, a good point using uh, uh, maybe some um, holographic patterns or lasers to actually uh, uh, change the local um, orientation of the, of the director um, and uh, you know, be able to control you know, the swimming behavior of bacteria on a completely different level uh, now, uh, basically both in space and time. And uh, uh, there's lots of work still need to be done in order to, to do that. But uh, um, yeah, it's worth, worth pursuing that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for good points. Yeah. Uh, dear, uh, dear Dr. Fer, uh, Taras, we have a question for, uh, question for, uh, for from the conference hall. Uh, uh, I was curious, uh, when you were talked about all the uh, transport or, or the carbon transport or, or with the flow, or how could you drop uh, this uh, particle uh, calls, uh, also, or uh, are you heating the delicate crystals to uh, uh, to uh, isotropic phase or uh, some another way? Yeah, we're just mixing. And could you precisely as they drop? Yeah, yeah. We're just mixing them together with uh, bacteria. Um, they, uh, they stay in the bulk. So we are able to achieve the alignment without going into the isotropic phase uh, of the chromonic. Um, so the droplets are actually staying in the bulk. Sometimes there are problems due to the interfaces between the isotropic pneumatic phases that tend to, to drag the particles to the surface and then they just attach to the surface and it's just hard to get, to get them again in the bulk. So like freely floating, uh, just simply mixing them together. Um, yeah, and uh, um, actually, you know, in principle, the particles in, in, the, in the chromonic, um, those colloidal particles that we use, the five micron uh, glass beads, um, are randomly distributed throughout the sample. Uh, we just got lucky uh, for some of them, uh, you know, to have some of them uh, inside the splay regions. Yeah, so we can see the video. Um, yeah. And to, to be transported with the bacteria jet. Um, but in principle, one can play with the surface, uh, surface properties or for surface anchoring of the particle. Uh, and um, uh, the elastic interactions uh, should should drive the particle to the specific region of the director deformation, either splay or bend. And we've done some work on that in thermotropic liquid crystals before. And we had uh, uh, we had uh, uh, 
particles with the normal anchoring condition on the surface uh, uh, to be primarily in display regions uh, with the dipolar particles and uh, uh, the tangential particles in the band region. So there are ways of uh, possibly, uh, you know, modifying the system and adding to this. Um, yeah, but um, okay. yeah. Thank okay, you so much. there are uh, three questions in the chat, so uh, we have to be more uh, short <laughs> answers, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to. Yeah, I'll try uh, to be short. Uh, uh, the question uh, from uh, Victor Kislyuk. Thank you for the clear presentation. What is the meaning of positive and negative charge? Is this an electrical charge or magnetic field can also be the uh, director field? Uh, yeah, so the M is the topological defect charge. Uh, it's, it's just this, it, it's just the number that tells uh, basically the, uh, the winding number of the director or how many times the director rotates around the core of the defect. Um, as one circumnavigates the core. Um, so in this case, uh, the director rotates for two pi as one uh, goes around for, again, two pi, and this results in the plus one defect since the director is uh, rotating with the, uh, with the, uh, radial, uh, with the radial vector. Um, and uh, yeah, there is a similarity, especially once you consider the interactions between um, the the defects in the bulk, uh, you know, there are similarities with the electros electrostatics, especially with respect to the uh, to the uh, colloidal particles dispersed into liquid crystals. Yeah. Okay, and uh, another question from professionals, I think. What is the reason for non-reverse bacteria motion? Is question from uh, Yuri Pashkevich. Uh, what is the reason for non-reverse bacteria motion as a topological defect with different sign? Is it connected with possible existence of a red chat potential? What is red chat potential initially? Yeah, I'm not sure about that, but I, I think I get the, the general point. Um, you know, we can simply, uh, we, we tried always to understand the basics of, of this system and uh, uh, this uh, uh, the concept of uh, active stress or active force, as you can see on, on, in the red arrows, uh, which is the which is the resultant force of the hydrodynamic interactions between the bacteria. So you have the force dipoles uh, that actually create this net force. Um, and just by simply playing with the geometry uh, and looking at the uh, orientation, local orientation of the bacteria nearby, you can kind of deduce the the active force. Um, on the other hand, you can do the more explicit analysis. You have the director field and you can plug in and calculate it through the, um, through the active force uh, stress uh, equation, um, the, uh, the force field. And the force field will, will give you a clear picture for the specific uh, you know, type of micro swimmer, you know, what, what, what kind of behavior you should expect. And as you can see, uh, there is a kind of a net force coming from the minus one half defect towards the plus one half defect. Uh, this is the force, uh, uh, force density map calculate, calculated for this director field. So there is an analytical, you can basically get the analytics for the force, uh, force map and then have an idea on the, on the behavior of the system. Yeah, I'm not okay. sure about the uh, and last question but... from the chat. It's this yeah. question again from. Sorry. Uh, last question from the chat from uh, again from Leonid Dolgo. Taras, one more question. What do you think? It's general question about liquid crystal display competition with a mold displays. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, plasma displays. Is this competition still actual? Which is winning in your opinion? I think I I'm over time. Olena wants to cut me. Yeah, but uh... Olena, what? 
I propose I... that it, it will be the, the last question because we move uh, from the agenda and uh, we also have a conference photo and uh, <laughs> without break, we must uh, to open the next, the next section. That's why uh, I propose that it will be the last question. After this, uh, all of the participants who uh, is present, uh, okay, who are present yeah. in conference hall, we will go for, to conference photo and we will ship and return back in 15 minutes. So please answer and we will stop. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, Leonid, this is kind of related to... And we will stop. Y yes, yes. Uh, so, th Leonid, this is uh, related to, you know, to the other answer that I gave you before. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, there is a competition. I'm not sure who's winning. I'm not, uh, you know, too much interested in the display technology at the moment. Uh, uh, but uh, I do believe that there is enormous potential for liquid crystals actually to be used in the much broader spectrum of applications. And to me, the biomedical one is the, the, the one that uh, uh, is you know, the most obvious uh, and uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, and not may probably not, not only that, uh, there are many other applications that we should look at and uh, be able to kind of extend the, the unique properties uh, and, and use the unique properties of the liquid crystals in other areas of, uh, of research or applications. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you again for the beautiful presentation, very clear and uh, Nice results. So, thanks again. And uh, let me close. We uh, finish our morning session. Thank you, all participants, all uh, listeners, for uh, their participation in the conference. Okay, bye. Uh, yes, uh, dear colleagues, now we will have break uh, for about uh, 15 minutes. Uh, for participants who are present in conference hall, we will move uh, for conference photo. <laughs> it's some advantages uh, to be present on the conference. Uh, we will uh, disseminate uh, this photo later, but uh, we will return for the next presentation in 15 minutes. So now small uh, break for coffee. Thank you for attention to everyone. Mm -hmm.